Yeah, kid. Welcome, welcome <laughs> to the Handsome Home Life Podcast here with Charles Wine Rob and Dan O'Neill. You know who else is handsome? El Julio Maravilloso. You know who else is handsome? Captain Permit. 516-513-8838. I <laughs> plot, love it. Plot twist. Uh, yeah. <laughs> welcome back to, uh, to actually episode two of the Dan O'Neill Show, uh, available exclusively at Cook Interactive. <laughs> Uh, today we have uh, our guest here, our main man, a uh, great friend here, mentor, uh, Charles Weinrob. We uh, obviously did a little play there on, on, on your podcast. Uh, I think that I did that was unexpected. Well. Yeah, right? <laughs> but I, I loved it. I loved it. So welcome to the, uh, the Dan O'Neill Show, episode two here. We have Charles Weinrob as a guest. Uh, my name is Dan O'Neill. I am 26 years old. I am the leader of the O'Neill team, Long Island's number one real estate team. We are going to do over a million dollars in GCI this year in our first year of uh, existence for the team. So we're super excited. We are forming this podcast here at Colca and uh, couldn't have think of anyone better to have uh, than you, my friend, Charles Weinrod. Right, it's good to be here. You know what the crazy part is? And I think about it. I feel like I've known you forever, mm-hmm. but I really only met you like a year ago. Mm-hmm. And, and that podcast that we did together came up in like one of my memories. And I was yeah. like, wow. We, we did your podcast first, and then we did um, your fundraiser for, uh, for Man and Woman of the Year, and then we became pretty close. Then I had you on my podcast that I did, whatever it was, a year and a that, half ago. That was when I first met you. Yeah. So I was like, I feel like I've been through war with this guy, <laughs> and it's only been like a year. I mean, we kind of have. I, I'm yeah. looking at memories from last year, and I'm like, this feels like it was 10 years ago. Like, it's kind of crazy how, how fast time is going. Yeah, man. Uh, but welcome. How you doing? I'm great, man. I'm great. Uh, I appreciate you being on the show. So we, I mean, we kind of, we talk every single day. So this is not really going to be, we're just going to jump right into it. You know, I'm not really going to go over the whole spiel. I think everyone listening kind of knows who you are and has a pretty good idea where you came from, what you're doing. The biggest thing for me and why I want to have you on the podcast is we talk every single day and I feel like they should all be sound bites. Like Mm -hmm. people should be able to listen in on them. Like they should be recorded. So I just wanted to have you on here, kind of chop it up and talk about some of the things that we talk about on a daily. Without a doubt. The biggest thing for me that I think people can benefit from uh, listening to you or myself on this podcast is social media. Um, social media for you and I really are our biggest biggest lead sources. It's how we're getting our name out there, networking. So my question to you, just to start this off, is what made you get into social media and how has it shaped your your career, you know, like you started yeah. the Handsome Home Buyer podcast two or three years ago when really yeah. podcasts weren't really yeah. a thing. Yeah, three or four years ago, yeah. Yeah, and you know, you had Beth on, you had Femi on, you had all these people, but you know, you were doing it with like an iPhone, you had no real production quality. Yep, there were and, roaches running around everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was in a basement. You, you, had a, you had your car wrapped, you had a smart car wrapped, you know, like, but you did it, and yeah. regardless of anyone was listening or not, you continued to do it, yep. and now you've built out this unbelievable podcast that I think everybody on Long Island listens to, uh, maybe even nationally as well, and it's just taken your your career to the next level. So what made you start the podcast, and what made you get into social media? Um, so basically, the podcast, I was invited on somebody else's podcast, and as soon as I did this, I was like, oh, this is freaking awesome. Like I was born for this kind of stuff. But in general, I'm always looking as much as I can. Like I'm not super into tech and we're working so much that it's hard to kind of see what the new trends are for Mm -hmm. every single thing. But every time I see something that pops out that's like relatively new, I try it. Yeah. Like recently I I got that, uh, I started that text platform Mm -hmm. where people can text me randomly through community and I'll answer all kinds of real estate investment questions. I just always try to be on the cutting edge of things where I can connect with people mm-hmm. and uh, it makes a huge difference, man. So you just decided one day I'm going to start a podcast. Um, I am just going to start inviting people on. It's good networking and it just kind of took off from there or? Yeah. So I, I network a tremendous amount and I used to network pre COVID mm-hmm. an insane amount. So there was a girl, a lady named Valerie Lamp who has a networking group that meets every, used to meet every month. Yeah. So I went there and she started doing a podcast. She invited me on hers. I was, I was hooked. I was like, Oh, this is the it's best fun. thing in the world. It's amazing, and then you start doing it. You start doing it because it's different and fun, and that's the primary reason, but then when you get into it, you start realizing there's all these other benefits to it. Like A, although this is very simple, Mm-hmm. I started in a roach infested basement with a hundred dollar <laughs> microphone and no video. I mean, I mean, you remember, you remember my set last year, my set last year was like, we no, were you were, couch, like, no, you were light years <laughs> away. I mean, this is where we are in Colca is absolutely amazing. Yeah. But Shout I was, Colca. there was literally three inch cockroaches running around oh while I was God. doing this thing in a Levittown basement. So, um, the point is, is even though it's simple and inexpensive, mm-hmm. it, people want to be on podcasts. Right. So if you want to meet somebody or build a relationship with somebody, 
All you have to do is invite them on your podcast. Mm -hmm. And even though, again, it's like this simple little thing, it allows you to meet people you otherwise would never meet before. Right. And it allows people to learn from you. You chop it up into a million pieces of content. It helps you put that out. And just a lot of positivity into the world. What what I found that is most interesting is you also build a relationship. So like I had Brian Carp on here last week. I've never really met Brian in person. Like we talk all the time on the phone and he gives me advice, but we've never really sat across, you know, belly to belly like this. And like, belly I like, I, belly. like I feel like I have a good relationship with him now. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like it, it was, it was cool. And like last year, Vinny Martino, like people that I've always wanted to get in front of. And, and that's what I'm going to be well, doing with this podcast. You and I, bro, you, yeah, I yeah. walked into ASOF's LLS thing. Uh-huh. You came up to me like, dude, I'm going to do a podcast. Oh yeah. Podcast. yeah, I remember Will that, you yeah. be on my podcast? I'm like, absolutely. And you're like, <laughs> Let's do this, yeah, and that's that. and that's how you and I basically forged a, a lifelong oh friendship. My God, I forgot about. I was, yeah, that's what I was talking I was about. Drinking, but wow, yeah, I, I remember that actually. It was yep. it was ASOS, It was the uh, LLS event that Beth threw, and I went up to you, and I'm like, "Dude, I'm gonna start a podcast. Want you on first? That was when I first got my license too, yep. and then I did it, and yeah. then you were wow, I forgot about that. Yeah. So, Brian Carp, I met on my podcast. Mm-hmm. I. Um, Beth, I became a lot closer with on my podcast. Jason yep. Ciano, I mean, the guy from Beachwood Home, Stephen Dub. There, there's so many people that I would never have met. Um, and so, so you don't even care. Like, so you started this with cockroaches in the basement. Like, yep. no one was even really listening, but you didn't care. Like, you were doing it for the networking. You were doing it because you wanted to do it. So, for a new agent or maybe somebody that's afraid to like get out of their shell and mm-hmm. and do this, right? Because I mean, we got some pretty bright lights here. Like, my tie's a little bit mangled. I had a, I had a sticker on my. Oh, you look sharp today, bro. That's Thank a fresh you. suit. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna plug where it's from until I get paid. But uh, the point of it is just that that. Like, what is your advice to somebody that's afraid? Like, for Just, me, for example, like, so you had Brie on your podcast, yeah. right? She is, uh, for those that don't know, Brianna Murphy is an agent uh, on the team, the O'Neill team. She's crushing it. Um, but her and everyone else really on the team, like, they're afraid to get in front of the camera. They are all great-looking people. They are all very uh, charismatic, energetic. Yep. They have a lot of good things to say. They're knowledgeable. But they, like, you put a camera in front of them, and they're like narcoleptic goats. They're like... <laughs> they, they don't want. They don't want to do it. You don't, they you, don't want you, to do it. You do have the sexiest team in Long Island. Real estate, you do. Now that I think about it, you do. You definitely have the the hottest team in Long Island. But real but nobody wants to get you know. And it's no. not even just my team. It's just in general. So like, what would you say to these people? Just I'm not going to curse, but just do it. That's the thing. You just have to. And here's the thing. You have to be the kind of person like you and I. We genuinely are unaffected by the way the world sees us. We mm-hmm. we don't care. So when you don't care, you're free to do pretty much anything and everything you want. Right. That said, you have a very young team. They're in their early 20s, mid 20s. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm 40 years old. I started this podcast. I was like 36 years old. So it, it also takes time to develop. You personally are way ahead of the curve, bro. Mm-hmm. Like you're 26 years old, basically leading the charge uh, in Long Island sales. And I mean, that's very, 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 very rare. But you just have to, they just have to do it. Yeah. You have to put yourself in uncomfortable situations. And that's why like with Bree and other people that I care about, mm-hmm. I put them in uncomfortable situations yeah. to push them and then hopefully it gets them going. Social media really is is the number one lead source for me. Like yeah. I, I pay for Zillow leads, right? I pay for, for everything, all, all these different you know lead sources and, and lead gen, but I don't use any of them. So I, I give them all to the team, but social media for me, even if it's just a live video outside of a property, or even if it is something like this, or asking other people to be on their podcast or doing whatever it is, like that is so crucial for you because it's all about perception. So yep. the more that you are out there, the more that you're doing, I mean, when I first got my license, people would come up to me like, dude, you're killing it, man. Like, you're doing amazing. I didn't even have like a sale at that point. Like, I was just going to other people's listings, right, that would let me. And I would do a live video or like a, you know, post that I did at open house. People like, holy smokes, man, you're crushing it. You're crushing it. Perception is reality. It it really is. So the social media aspect of things is so important. And if you're a new agent, if you're an agent that's trying to go from 10 deals to 20 deals, whatever it may be, like, you have to put yourself out there because – that's how people get to know you. Well, think about it like this, especially now you're in COVID, right? So there's there's really no networking. Right. People are weird like having you in their house. They don't want a ton of people in their house. Whereas right. a, a seller might have brought in 10 agents to speak to before. They don't want to do that. They don't want 10 random people running in and out of the house. They don't know where they've been. Mm-hmm. So the people are on their phones all day long. Yeah. So if you're not there posting at 8 in the morning, 12 when people go to lunch, mm-hmm. 5 when they get out of work, every single day, 7 days a week across all platforms – People are going to forget about you. What's interesting is, is also like I've made videos that have flopped. I've made videos that have gotten you know, 100 views. And, you know, I've also made videos that I thought were awful that went completely viral and had like 30,000 views overnight. All it takes is, is one video. So yeah. even if you start doing it and you're like, oh, I hate the way I look here and maybe you delete it or, oh, this is, you know, bad. 
you never know. Like it could go viral, or it could it could make yep. a difference if one person watches it or sees it and gets to know you or gives you business from it. Then it's a home run and it's free. It is free, no money. Without zero. a doubt. I, but I think people really need to not focus on the likes and the views mm-hmm. you look at it as a metrics okay fine but just put it out because you know it's the right thing to do you're helping people it's good for the brand etc yep. just keep putting stuff out forget about what you look like don't right. worry about what you're saying just everybody has valuable information the way that i try and handle my social media is as if it were a tv show so i try and post and do stuff as if people were following along with a with a tv show so and it's all about consistency because yeah. if you're watching a TV show and you're following along for four, five, six months, but then there's nothing there for six months, well, you're going to find another TV show to go watch. You're going to find yep. something else to, to be entertained 100%. by in, in theory. So it's also posting, but it's just being consistent with it. With that, and yeah. if you're somebody, again, if you're a new agent, if you're an investor like yourself, right? Anybody within this business, even if you're an entrepreneur, just just post. Just mm. post. You don't need a professional cameraman. Nope. You don't need a full-time camera crew. Nope. You have a phone, you can do a a Snapchat video, an Instagram video, Facebook, whatever it is. You have a phone in your hand. You have, right here is more technology than probably your computer. Yeah. (laughs) Well, maybe actually it is more. Consistency is key though. It's really, really important to do it all the time. And that's really what the problem is with like 95% of people. Mm -hmm. They start, they're like, oh, whatever. And then a month goes by or a week goes by or whatever it is and they stop. Yeah. You have to be doing it all the time. So you, I mean, you were doing it for three, four years, right? When did it finally like start to like kind of take off where you were like, holy crap, like people are, are watching or you would go to the YPN event. Like I remember we were at, uh, oh man, I forget what the name brewery of that place three. was. No, it wasn't, it uh, wasn't brewery. That was pretty cool too. But it was the one before that. Uh, it was the last YPN event. Oh my God, it was so far. It was in the middle of no man's land. Uh, Cape Pacho. Uh, okay. And everyone's coming, you know, we're sitting oh, there yeah, just yeah, talking, yeah, like yeah, eat yeah, winnings yeah. and everyone's coming up to you. So like, you were doing this for three or four years. When did it finally start to like, wow, this is actually you know going somewhere and people are noticing it and listening and following? It it goes in, it goes in kind of waves, but really. So I was doing the podcast, yeah, and then I started working with Matt R Visual a half day a week, mm-hmm. and that started to really kind of work. And then COVID hit, and I remember we went to Brewery Three. This is like the thing that really rings in my in my <laughs> mind. So we went to Brewery Three. And the crowd at Brewery Three is like twenty five to thirty five, where yeah. I'm forty one. My typical networking group before was like 35 to 45. Yeah. So the 25 to 35s are really on social media. That's their shtick. Mm-hmm. Whereas and that my, was like Queens, Nassau people too because that's, that was Eric's Braun. You know, yeah, it was a good mix. Crew. Yeah. When I walked in there, I felt like a celebrity. <laughs> and they're like, oh, you're crushing it. And the funny thing was, the year, the year before, so 2019, I did the least amount of deals I ever did because yeah. I didn't like the market. I was in school, a whole bunch of things. And people mm-hmm. were like, you're crushing it. I'm like, bro, that's the least amount of deals I ever did. But because you're in the public eye, like, you're, yeah. like you say, the perception is you're out there. But you're also somebody, and we, we you know, are the same, where we don't really look at the numbers. Like You're not going around saying, oh, I flipped, you know, I did 100 houses this year. I did 200. Like, we both have other things going on. I'm not somebody that like, you know, every single deal is like, I got to write it on my board. Oh, I did 202 deals. Like I, that's something that we both don't really focus on. It's more so like what we're able to do giving back wise, right? With the LLS for, for you, mm-hmm. um, the a value that you're able to provide for new agents, for investors. Like you're not somebody that hides anything. Like you, you no. put everything out there. You know what yeah. I mean? Like all of your strategies, your tips, like you literally, everything. And that's kind of the segment into my, my next, my next part here is we're, we both share this again, where like, People message you all the time for advice, for help. Constantly. Constantly. And the same with me. And I'm in like a constant struggle and battle with it because it's very time consuming. Yeah. Like I'm somebody that I feel, you know, no matter what it is, right? Like even if this, you're you're not getting anything from it. There's no value. There's nothing. But you are paying it forward by going to lunch or dinner with these, with somebody, right? By messaging back and forth with a new agent like we were talking about the other night. Um, You are giving back to the community and the industry that way without expecting anything in return. My, like, the thing that I'm struggling most with is that I'm not doing a great job of managing my time. So by saying yes to, like, a meeting where maybe you don't get any value back or whatever it is, it's tough because it, it's it's constant. So you're yeah. spending a lot of time doing these, you know, yeah. giving back to, to people, right, where, where they're asking you questions or advice. So how do you manage that within your time? So it's a difficult balance. A, I'm not great with time management either. I just work myself to the bone. Right. Um, it's interesting and ironic because I built a business on that. I built a business on giving people my time, going out, building mm-hmm. relationships because that – when you have relationships, like right now the, the market shifts, things change. I'll give you an example. As an investor, there were some investors that were crushing it at auctions and all they did was go to auctions, right? They're, they're a one-trick <laughs> pony and you can't be a one-trick pony. Yeah. Now there's no auctions. Those guys are screwed. Yep. 
but relationships never die. Just as long as you take care of the people, you're always going to get deals from those relationships. Yeah. Now it's gotten to the point where, I mean, I literally got between six and 12 DMs from random people I never met yesterday who were like, I want to pick your brain. I want to take you out to lunch. I want to talk about how you got into the business. It's a lot. I'm getting the same thing, and, and it's a lot. It really, and, and I'm struggling with it because I don't, I don't even have the time for for grace. You know what I mean? Like I don't have. I, it's tough to give anybody undivided attention for yeah. a certain amount of time, and, and it's something that I'm that I'm dealing with. That I'm just uh, I'm just honest with them, and I just say, listen, I really appreciate that. Thank you, thank you for following me. Thank you for all the kind words. Unfortunately, I'm sure you understand. I get you know a dozen of these a day. Right. I, I can't mean talk to anybody, everybody, although I would really love to. And they're yeah. like, yeah, man, listen, I understand. Okay. That's something that I definitely, I need to learn to say no, I think a little bit more. But if you are a newer agent or you are somebody that wants to, to better your business, reach out to the people that, that you look up to. Reach out to people that are maybe more successful or that are doing things that you want to do and ask them for advice. Because listen, at the end of the day, we can shoot a, a simple DM or have a conversation. It's mm-hmm. just a matter of, there's a lot of people that are asking to go yeah. to dinner and lunch and that kind of stuff. But It's if, also a matter of the way you go about it too and, right. how, and how often. If you ask me once like, Brian Carp tells a story. It's funny. So I reached out to him and I'm like, I want to have you on my podcast. And he's like, no. And then I hit him up again. And he's like, no. And I'm like, that's a bunch of bullshit, bro. You know, he's like, I don't have time. I'm like, you know, you have time. You just don't care. Yeah. So he's like, all right, I'll come in. But that's the same thing. Also, a lot of people hit me up with an ulterior motive. Yeah. They're hitting me up. If you want to engage somebody that you want to learn from, mm-hmm. you don't engage them from, you know, a position of them, them not knowing you and wanting something from them. Yeah. You don't do that. Yeah. You want to like give first. Yeah. You want to give, 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 and then ask later, or you'll just naturally get it. So I, I and this is what I was a little bit annoyed with, is I met with somebody, I gave them like, you know, kind of some advice what to do. They were in a different market, right? Mm-hmm. Like a Nassau market. So so my advice is, you know. I know where this is going. Do it do it out there. You know what I mean? Take my that advice. That was very uncool. And, and do it in very. your market area, you know? Very. like Very. So whatever it was, right? I told them kind of what we're doing and how it's working. And the next day I open up, you know, my stuff, and he's... He's yeah, in my market doing what I told him to do in yeah, my whole town. Like, yeah, not cool. You can't do that, yeah, you know? Yeah, not cool. So that kind of like, now I'm like a little gun shy. I'm a little bit traumatized where it's like, do I want to meet, you know? So, and, and I struggle with it too because eventually I do want to get into coaching. I want to get into speaking. I want to help. Um, and I just have to understand that that's going to that's gonna be the case. Not everybody has the best intentions. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, you weed them out. Plus, the, I mean, there's the abundance theory. Plus, listen, it's like, Somebody can try to be you, but mm-hmm. no one's going to be you. Yeah. It's, it's, it's that simple. Like mm-hmm. when you're operating like you are on such a high level, people can try to – you could tell people everything you do yeah. step by step. That doesn't mean – It's also how, how hard you work. Well, well that's what and, I'm saying. We're, we're both people that, you know, we're working our fingers to the bone um, every single day. Like there's times when we're on the phone and you're like – you know, we'll both remember like this phone just does stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a blessing. It really yeah, is. It's yeah. a blessing, but – it's it's exhausting. Yesterday it was like seven thirty at night. I'm just like, oh, I know, I know, I, and it doesn't stop. People calling at nine or ten, and and you have to respond because you've worked so hard to build those relationships. Yeah. Like the fact that in the middle of COVID, my phone rings like crazy for deals, and your phone rings like yeah. crazy for listings. There, most people are really hurting. Yeah, I agree, and uh, it's a it is a blessing, and it's all about perspective too. Because it could like there are days that like I, I catch myself saying like I just wish my phone would stop for one day, and it's such a bad such a bad thing to say like you know i just wish my phone would stop because it, this is what we worked hard for for that phone to ring but is there ever a time that you want to take your phone and throw it in the sound or, or you're not at that level uh i you mean have there, a lot more patience there are I times but i uh but but i don't but also i'm different than you my my business is different than you in the sense that you're a real estate agent so you're literally seven days a week and especially weekends yeah i now take uh, make it a habit of taking sundays off i've been doing that for like the last year mm-hmm. and it doesn't really impact my business i can get pe- back to people if they hit me up on sunday but most people aren't hitting me up on sunday okay so We're, segment into the next part work-life balance so you have now implemented- i don't think it exists <laughs> <laughs> so you don't think it exists well at this level you know what it is i guess it what is work-life balance i mean i don't know <laughs> my, my job, my Can we job. Put the definition up because I have no clue. My job is my life in the sense that I, I love it. Like this yeah. is fun for me. This what we're doing now is fun for me. You and I negotiating a deal or whatever. Yeah, yeah. That that is my hobby. Mm-hmm. So, but I just think it's important to make sure that you have good communication with the people that are in your life to make sure that you're not neglecting them and that because sometimes it's so we get so focused on what we're doing mm-hmm. that it's easy to kind of 
uh, emotionally neglect people around you sometimes. Well, so for the last three, four years, did you have those Sundays off or this is something that you now are just implementing? Because I mean, you were going to school, you were doing yeah. deals, you were doing 200, whatever, whatever it was. Is this work-life balance something that now, you know, you've just created with wisdom, you know, now that you're getting, not, I want to say older, but now that you're getting more into the business, was this work-life balance something that now you said, okay, I'm going to take Sundays off and I'm going to hang out with Christina. I'm going to spend time with my family. Or is this something that you always have done? No, you know what it was? I like, I was working like crazy and then, I mean, I still work like crazy and then it's a matter of also efficiency. So sometimes Mm -hmm. you can put in a tremendous amount of hours, but not be productive. So I find if I have, you know, the Sunday off or half a Sunday off, I'm a lot more productive throughout the week. Plus she was always so understanding of my work schedule and everything I do. Mm -hmm. I always say like, I must be a very difficult person to date. (laughs) I, 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 I know that. Me. I'm like, I must be a very, very <laughs> difficult person to date. And I said, you know what? If you care about somebody you and they're really understanding about everything, you have mm-hmm. to a lot time. Right. So Sunday has always been Christina Day. <laughs> so whatever she, Christina listens to this. She probably won't, but that's She awesome. will. She definitely will. So whatever we, you know, Sunday is her day. Whatever she wants to do, we do it. And that's it's awesome. uninterrupted. And I put the phone away. And nothing's really going to happen on a Sunday that I can't deal with a few hours later. Yeah, so that's something that I'm I'm personally working on. And I had Carpon last week. And I think, you know, agents that are doing a certain amount of business, like it's tough to it's tough to do that. Like even if I try to to do that, uh, my phone is ringing, there's fires, there's stuff going on. So it's really difficult to just put your phone down for a day. I mean, even like Beth and, and Chris Backus and Mark Donnelly, who are all mega successful, they have now gotten to a point where it's like, 7.30, my phone's off. You know, if, you, if you're texting me at 8 o'clock at night or calling me at 8 o'clock at night, you can wait until the morning. Nothing is going to happen. But I'm just not... No, I'm not there. I, me neither. No, no, and, no, I no. Admire, and I admire and respect them for that because that's very impressive that they can, that they can do that and, and people are waiting on them type of thing where I feel like if I don't get back to somebody within like a 20-minute span, like I have pinging anxiety. Like you and I both, we call each other and like you'll call me and like I'm on the other line and then I call you and then you're on the other... You know what I mean? It's, it's like call it's you back, nuts. call you back. It's that nuts. Yeah. But it's like if I don't get back to you right away, like I, it's, I get anxiety or probably vice versa. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's, it's just a matter of what works for you, man. It's a matter of what works for you. And listen, there's a direct correlation between how hard you work and what the results are. Yeah. And everybody's measure of success is different. So if you were to give me advice or somebody listening who maybe is grinding you know, their fingers to the bone in terms of work-life balance, what would that advice be? What, what, would, what would your advice be to me? I mean, you tell me all the time, but I'm not, I don't listen, so... <laughs> But like for you somebody you listening, you don't need advice, bro. You're, you're, but, but somebody listening, you know, like what would, what would you tell them in terms of work-life balance? I mean, it's a very simple thing. I don't, I don't like the term work-life balance. I just think it's whatever makes you happy. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Whatever, when you wake up in the morning, whatever makes you happy, but just be cognizant of the feelings of the people that are close to you, that care about you, that are really there for you. Right. And if that means allotting time to spend with them because you care about them and they want to be with you, then you have to do that. Uh, and it, it's different for everybody. Like we were talking about Brian before. Brian is definitely a seven day a week guy, but he coaches his kids soccer and all that. Mm-hmm. But there's certain things you listen. There's certain things you have to give up. You, me, Carp, Beth, all the successful agents. We give. There's things that we give up. There's a give and take. Right. So you're doing really well. You're fucking crushing it. But there's a lot of things that you give up. Yeah. Socially, family time, friends, friends yeah. etc. Yeah. How do you feel about working out? I know that you were also, I mean, I'll call you and all I'll hear in the background is, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm riding my bike. You know, like, so you're, you're somebody that works out the same way. We keep using carpet just he's the first person that's coming to mind because he was my last guest. But, you know, he's somebody that's big into to lifting in the gym. Asaf German, big, you know, big in the gym. Something that I, I'm lacking, again, self-aware of. But you listen to these people like Gary Vee and, and all these mega successful people, they all say that, you know, you have to sweat, you have to work out. Yeah. For people that are, uh, maybe have lost that, again, I'm asking for a friend here, me, <laughs> what is your advice on that? Like, do you think that you riding on your Peloton or you Gotta riding in Belmore 100 miles an hour with your helmet on? And do, do the you Belmore, think that that... The, the rides actually are changed my life really wow a you have to exercise super important Uh you want to feel good you don't want to look like a bag of shit right but when i go so i go out on these what are you trying to say asshole (laughs) is this a this is a g-rated yeah sorry 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 um (laughs) so uh i go on these 30 mile bike guys like 20 25 30 mile bike rides and i'll put on like podcasts of people that i I admire 
And when I come back from the podcast, when I come back from the ride, I email myself like at least three to five things that I remembered from that, and That's then cool. I implement them in my business. Yeah. So when you're an entrepreneur and you're like always out there putting out fires, like you are constantly putting out fires, appraisals, this didn't show up, oh, the final oh, walkthrough, da da da, this agent, whatever. Yeah. You don't have time to sit there and, and dream and work on your business. When you disconnect and you go out and you have somebody inspiring you and you spend that hour and a half doing that, game changer. But what I've noticed is um, like a lot of the ideas that I come up with for my videos are typically when I'm like when I'm driving. So if I have like a long drive and I put my phones down or listening to music, that's when I quote unquote dream and that's where these ideas pop into my head for my videos. But I've been so busy and putting out fires and doing this and doing that that I've kind of lost that like little – that dream time. So yeah. now my videos and the production and the creativeness of my stuff has been going down just because of the, the move to signature, um, you know, my house buying and, and whatever. I've lost that little time. So for me, like I'm, you're never going to see me ride a bike probably, but <laughs> I, I was, you know, I need to get back into lifting or cardio or whatever it is. So that way I can just disconnect for a little bit and, yeah. and get back to that dreaming state of, of creating new content. And, and it goes to you like, like I put out a video of me on a jet ski and then you make a video of the Dos Equis man. Yeah. I make a video, uh, you know, jumping in a pool and then you make a video of an elf on the shelf and you put it on News 12. So it's kind of like we, we both like motivate each other in terms of the videos. Yeah. And it's something that I love about you because like you'll send me a video and you're like, I'm like, damn, dude, that's amazing. Like now I got to like I got to up my game now and come up with something. I got to jump out of a plane. I got to do something. And I think it's vice versa. Like I'll send you yes, one and you're like, of course. You know, you have to come up with something too. So you working out, that's that's where you come up with these ideas for the videos? It's, yeah, for me, A, definitely don't be hard on yourself because I think people need to understand that it's never like this in life, right? You have a lot of things going on. So you were putting out a ton of content, you fell off, just like someone's eating really healthy, then they fall off, just right. just get back on. Yeah. Right, I think people get discouraged and like, uh, you know, F it. Yeah. But I think everybody, the working out is good because it kills two birds with one stone. You get healthy, you feel good. And you have to find some way to disconnect so that right. your mind can focus on, on you. Especially like you're an insanely creative person. Mm -hmm. So you come up with ideas very, very fast. Yeah. If you disconnect for an hour, and listen, nothing is going to happen in an hour that you can't deal with an hour later. True. Right? <laughs> yeah, kind of. <laughs> I mean, when I, when, I was, when I was your age not to date myself, I would have felt the same way. Mm -hmm. And I'm still nuts now. I was sending emails at 1 o'clock in the morning last night. But if you disconnect for an hour... Mm -hmm. Nothing is going to happen that you can't. Fix. Are, are you uh, an early bird? Are you like a, a 4 a.m. guy? Or? Like I want to be that guy that wakes up at 3.30 a.m. and like works out and stuff, but I'm, I'm not. Yeah. I'm, I'm more of like a late night guy. Like I was on the Peloton last night at 11 o'clock. <laughs> That's crazy. Robin, my girl, like six months pregnant. I was pedaling away watching her. <laughs> But but that's what you got to do. You got to get it in. So I don't yeah. think it, it I don't think it matters when you do it. Right. I also need to sleep. Like I sleep. Last night I slept five hours, which is not like I typically need like seven eight hours of sleep. Really? What, what time you wake up in the morning typically? I typically wake up like six o'clock. Oh wow. So I'm up okay. six o'clock. I'm in the office by like seven, and then I work until basically I pass out. Yeah, I mean you start putting out content like Instagram stories and posts like pretty early six thirty seven o'clock. But that you're yeah. already ahead of the curve though, because most people aren't waking up until eight o'clock nine o'clock. So I'm doing this six, seven thing too. And every now and then I'll throw in like a 4 a.m. and I'll get to my office and I'll drink yeah. a ton of coffee just to, you know, get stuff done before people wake up. Yeah. Um, what would your advice be to somebody getting into the business in terms of their schedule? Like what happens if somebody says, and I get this question all the time, like I'm new, I don't have any listings, I don't have any business. Like why am I getting up at 6 a.m.? What should I be doing? How can I be prospecting? What would your advice be to somebody getting uh, started or maybe somebody that's doing business that wants to do more in terms of their schedule? Yeah, so the thing that drives me nuts, and there's, there's no judgment here, but you're just, you're not allowed to complain about it. For example, mm -hmm. if I look at your Instagram and it's Tuesday and it's 12 o'clock and you're shopping or like, you know, just hanging out or going to the gym or whatever, yeah. and you're complaining that you don't have business, yep. I don't want to hear anything from you. I know. You just have to get up and get moving and don't think about you know it gets overwhelming if you think about the big picture mm -hmm. just pick one activity and then as soon as that's done what's the next activity just right. just little by little are, are you a notepad person like a, yes okay. yeah me too yeah you write everything down everything mm -hmm. i write everything I down to. i put a list together every day like every night for the next day i put a list together of all these things and me then too. more things and then i start scratching yeah me off. too at the end of the day i want to look at the pad and be like yeah me too. Okay. It, look, it looks like someone like a dog chewed it by the end of the day because it's like, you know, you're crossing this out, then you're rewriting it, crossing that out. But I, I have to like physically, dude, I'm like sick, I think. I think I might have OCD because I have to write it like on a yellow pad okay. and then I write it in my notes in my phone and okay. then I have like a to-do app on my phone that I rewrite it a third time. It's bad. And it's, it's almost like too much. Yeah, like 
but because there's so much, like I, I might be on the phone with you and you call me and be like, hey, you know, West Babylon or this or that or like the check, so, the check. I forgot the check. So if I didn't write it down, did you, I, for, I forgot the I forgot you? the check. Yeah, <laughs> I forgot the check. See, so like, but because it's not like to do it, you know what I mean? Like, so you know they have this. God. Th- this technology came out. They have a pad, like a regular so pad, funny. like a notepad. You write on it with an electronic pen. It writes out ink, but then it automatically transcribes it into your phone. See, so like I didn't write it down. That's what you need. And I forgot it. That's uh. What yeah. I want to do is get like an iPad and have it as if it is like a notes thing where I can just keep it in my car. Like yeah. I've, I've seen realtors' cars where like they have like um, like stands for like a desk. Yeah. Like their back is like a printer. Yeah. I, that's just not me though. I, I don't know. Like I feel like your car is your office. Like you're some, you had a smart car I miss wrapped. That. I for, miss that thing, bro. Do you really? I fucking love that car. Do you miss it because of the public, like the, the PR and the, and the branding or you miss it because – it was the car. I mean, it was 150 bucks a month. <laughs> I put like 15 dollars a week in gas in it, and have I could, you, have you seen his new car? I could park it on this table. So you go to New York City, you know that little spot that we could drive in the city. Yeah. Like I can't get parking. Like look at that thing. I'm the guy that fits in that spot. Were you always somebody like? So you're not materialistic at all. I mean, your outfit yeah. right now is probably a all all bought as gifts. Every, right. I swear to God, all of so, it. So you're not materialistic at all, no. and you are incredibly successful. Have you always been that way? Did you, I mean, I, I know just from, from knowing you that you grew up, you know, middle class, middle to upper, upper class, I would yeah. say. Is it always something that you just were never really like that or? Yeah, I mean, listen, I, I was very, very blessed. I had great parents and I, I pretty much was, I didn't, I wasn't left wanting anything growing up. Mm-hmm. It just, um, it just didn't, it just didn't really make me happy. Like I do what I do because I like the rush of it. I need the challenge of it. I have a lot of energy that always needs to get expelled. I don't do it to buy nice stuff. Plus... I've been really, really fortunate because my father's been in business his entire life, so I watch that. Mm-hmm. And I've been in business for myself since I was 23 years old. Wow. So I've seen you know, the, gr- the Great Recession, which is probably, hopefully, as bad as we'll ever see it. Yeah. And I've seen very successful people up and down. And there's oh, a lot of times there's a common thread to that, which is nothing lasts forever. Mm-hmm. And when you're making the money, you have to be smart with it. And you can't be spending it like it's never going to end because it's going to end. And you also can't be a one-trick pony. You have to be doing a whole bunch of different things because when something goes to shit, at least you have these other things. Right. So if I am like – the only thing I own that does not make – that literally costs me money is my car. So I, have a, I got a Mini Cooper that's now 500 bucks a month that literally makes me twitch because my car before that was $260 a month. I don't own a house that I live in. Not that that's a bad thing, but I don't own a house that I live in. That is literally the only thing I own that does not make me money. Yeah. God forbid something happened tomorrow and mm-hmm. I couldn't work. I, I have enough rental properties and passive income that I would never have to work. And they are leveraged in such a way that you know, I, I could have tenants not paying and I would be fine. So how many, um, how many rentals do you have? Uh, I just actually got another nine units yesterday. Congrats. So somewhere between like 93 and 100, something like that. And what is your, so I mean, you have your hands in, in a million different things. You're doing commercial, you're doing development, you're yep. doing industrial, you have, um, you have the, the rental portfolio, you're flipping, um, equity fund. What is your two year goal? Like what, what, what is next? You know, you have the social media, you have the yep. podcast, you have all these different things going on. Like what is, what is next for El Julio Maravilloso? Maravilloso. So my, th- my plan is this. I want to pri- open, open a private equity fund within the next three to five years, closer to five years. Mm-hmm. Right now, we're in a recession. The, uh, the fix and flip market is hot if you are dialed in. Before I, I've, most of my deals come by way of networking. Now I'm cranking up my marketing machine. I've been working about it. We talk about it yeah, all yeah, the time. Yeah. So I want to get in there and I want to do, I, I've hit the triple digit house mark before. I want to do 200 houses a year before wow. I leave the game within the next three years you're to never, prove to myself that I was the best. You're never leaving. Before I go. I'm definitely. You're never leaving. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to play that game until I play the new game, which okay. is, so this is exactly what I'm doing. This is my plan. I have a bunch of commercial development deals in the pipe and I keep putting more in. Those mm-hmm. things take one to three years to hit. I'm flipping like a crazy man, expanding my plan, my platform there. Mm-hmm. And as the commercial development deals hit, I'm going to segue into private equity and raise a shit ton of money right before hopefully the market crashes again, like the economy goes yeah, down, yeah. Mm-hmm. and then go buy everything on sale, nice. and then ride that into uh, 
forever. But but forever, like what, it never what is, ends. I was gonna it say, never ends. It's never gonna it end. never ends. Because what, what's gonna happen is that's gonna be your goal, and you're gonna get that done in five years, and then you're gonna be 45 years old, and then your new goal is gonna be I want to do this, I want to do that, and it's it's never gonna end for people like us. It, it never it's, ends. It's, it's it's a disease. It's it like never it's ends. a sickness. Like it, it's, it never ends. And it's not. It, I mean, it's apples and oranges, and I probably shouldn't even say this, but it's almost like something like alcoholism or or a disease that way, where like you really. It's an addiction. You really, yeah. you, you can't stop. Like I don't ever see. No. There's times where maybe you're burnt out or you're tired of it, but we both love this business so much and, and the wins, the daily wins that that, that we get. That there's never going to be an end, end it, game to this. It never ends. And, and really, like, should it really ever end? If it ended, like, what are we going to do? We're going to sit around. We're going to watch TV. Like, what are we? Uh, what are we going to do? Yeah. I feel like the point of life is to be challenged you can teach every it Peloton. day. Right? <laughs> oh Jesus. Challenged every day, pushed every day, new experiences, right? At the end of life, what do you have? You have the experiences. Right. You can't take the money with you, none of that stuff. Mm -hmm. It's my thing, and I remember like feeling this way in like my early to mid 20s was when I'm, uh, and Gary Vee talks about this a lot now, which is interesting. When I'm like 95, 100, whatever years old on my deathbed, I, I just, I don't want to have any regrets. Yeah. I want to I feel like I left this life with nothing in the tank. Do you have any regrets? No. Nothing? I don't. Nice. No, I, no regrets. Everything, uh, no. I mean, maybe, I was like, ah, should I have gone away to college? But if I went away to college, I wouldn't have had the experiences here that I had. So, yeah. you know, there's a plan for me. I push it every day. I wake up. And just to our point before, like, I've known you for a year. Mm. The amount, there's a ton of people that are like, oh, you went by so fast. And you talk to them, like, what went on? They're like, ah, everything's the same. <laughs> Bro, the amount of shit that we have done in the last year is crazy. Crazy. Yeah. That's why I don't mind when time goes by fast because I know that we're packing that time with so much. Yeah. What is, as we wrap up here, uh, your favorite thing about this business? What do you like most about it? My favorite thing about the business. So I come from a very creative family. Uh -huh. my, um, my one sister is a copywriter in advertising and she's an artist. My other sister wow. is a photographer and she can... she blows she's a glass blower i swear to god, I swear to god. what she, do you mean like you ever see those like those people that have that long tube and they heat up the glass and they blow into the glass and they make like pots and statues and all kinds of shit wow i dude i i cannot that's i was gonna say can I, you draw a stick figure no i can't even read my own name when i sign it you sure you're part of the family yeah right my um my creative my artistic ability is deal structure and building things. Like it's really cool to walk. I still get so excited when I walk into a house. I've done 300 plus houses at this mm -hmm. point. I walk into a house, it smells like cat piss, there's fleas everywhere, it's disgusting. Yeah. And I still get super excited about the creative process of what we're gonna do to this place. That's awesome. Awesome. What is your least favorite part of this business or thing about this business? There's gotta be something. Nah, man. Uh, don't come on. There's gotta be no. Man, there's, you know, there's nothing that you don't. There's not one thing you dislike. I love every part of the process. It's awesome. You're full of shit. No, I'm serious. Every part. Not one thing you can think of that I that I really really dislike. I mean, it's not that you really really dislike, or maybe you wish was different, or anything. No, because listen, anything that I want to be different, I have the power to change, and I'll do that. Mm -hmm. Like right now, I'm a little bit I'm a little bit too involved in the construction process. I don't want to do that. Right. But. That's my fault. Mm -hmm. I have to make sure that I hire another CM or I structure things differently or I delegate it the responsibility more. But um, I love everything about this business, bro. Even when you f you're flipping a house and you have five different accepted offers and they all back out once they get their, the green light that they're accepted, that doesn't bother you? Love it. Because, love it. <laughs> because, so when you, because when you and I end up blowing a house out at $20,000 over ask, it wouldn't be as sweet. Yeah. Okay. No, I love it. Uh, anything we got to plug here, Captain Permit, uh, you want to give the number, Mike's the man, you guys get everything done. Any, any plugs as we wrap this up? Obviously, I'm the handsome home buyer. You have a house that smells like cat pee is dated from the 1960s. <laughs> Six inches of mold on the wall, human waste floating past the basement steps, what I leave out. Land, commercial property, I want to buy it. 516-777, sold. And if you have a permit problem anywhere on Long Island, from Elmont to Montauk and everything in between, <laughs> and if you're in real estate, you definitely have a permit problem. Call the captain, 516-513-8838. What about uh, social media? Where, where ah, can people that's follow right. you? Every platform there is, even TikTok. I'm shimmying on TikTok these days. <laughs> oh, Handsome <God>. underscore <laughs> home buyer or Charles Weinraub. YouTube, everywhere. You name it. All right. So that, uh, that wraps up episode two here at the Dan O'Neill Show. Uh, we are exclusively on Coke Interactive. Thank you for tuning in. My guest, Charles Weinraub. 
Uh, hopefully you learned a few things here, and uh, we're super excited for for next episode. Uh, any last be any last piece of advice? Uh, if somebody's listened for this entire time, any last nugget that you might think of? It's a new year. Not that I believe in New Year's resolutions, but if you <laughs> in any way are not happy with your life today, make a change. Get it. it. Just All do right. it. Get it. Episode two, Dan O'Neill Show. Thank you, Coke Interactive. You're the man.